Hey there friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I'm back with a new layout and process video for the Paige Evans design team. And I'm gonna start this layout with a cup file. And this is one that Paige designed. It's called Signage Post. And I have the perfect photo for this cup file. Uh, we recently took a trip to Exuma, Bahamas. And we went on a little day trip and found this little beach and I had to take a photo with this giant signpost and I, I thought I have to use this cut file with it. It's perfect. Now I wanted to make the cut file resemble the one in the photo as much as possible so I decided to color it brown because it is wood and I just cut this on white cardstock um, like I usually do and I'm gonna color it and I pulled out some gelatos gelatos are really fun to use easy and quick way to add color and I got some brown ones and some gold ones here and I'm just gonna smudge it down and then dip my finger into a little bit of water to help smudge the color now if you've never used gelatos they're a cross between I would say a crayon an oil pastel and some lipstick because they look like lipstick little chapstick there um, but yeah, you just scribble it down and then use a brush or your finger. I like my fingers because they work better to smudge the color. Uh, you can blend colors together. Uh, if you add water, they react really nicely and they blend really easily. So they are definitely fun to use. And these are all by Faber-Castell. But anyway, the whole thing's done there. And I love how that turned out. Looks kind of weathered and wooden. And uh, yeah, I think it matches the photo pretty well. So I'm going to start out usually, uh, using mostly the Horizon collection for this. This is the 6x8 paper pad. And uh, it's perfect if you like rainbows because there are a ton of rainbow colors in this collection. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to continue on with that theme. And basically back each of these pieces of wood with a different color or a different pattern. And the easiest way to do this particular one, I think, is to trace the shape and then cut it out and then just glue it down to the back because these are basically just thick arrows. And so they're a pretty easy shape to trace and cut. Uh, you could also just glue the thing down to some paper and then cut around it after it's glued down. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it's a little too detailed. It just depends on the cut file. Uh, this one was pretty easy to trace and cut so and the fun part about this or one of the fun things about it is you get to go through all the papers and pick and choose which one you want to use uh, and which part of each paper you want to use you know so you can really pinpoint certain sections of each paper and you can really control the color or the pattern it just depends so i'm going to use some pinks some greens i think i'm going to get a yellow one in there a little bit of blue i'm trying to basically use bright colors that are going to contrast with all the blue in the picture because there is a lot of blue sky and blue water in that picture so there you go you can see it's pretty much done there i did use one pattern paper that has phrases on it, it says travel the world thought that turned out really cute and then i realized that i needed to back the rest of the cut file the actual wooden post so i'm just going to quickly take some scrap white cardstock and my brown gelatos again and make a little brown area here just by scribbling them down using my brush with some water and that's going to give me sort of a basically a pattern paper to back the uh, little open spots there of the post and here's an example where i'm just going to add some glue and then glue it down and then cut around it uh, you know, I can trace it again, but these are pretty easy to do. So I'm going to, yeah, there's just a couple open spots there. I'm going to glue down and then cut those out. And then it's going to look like an actual wooden pole. And I feel like, you know, it looks a little more genuine, a little more realistic, kind of like the one in the picture. And I know someone's going to ask me, and I keep forgetting to show it. Someone actually requested, and I keep forgetting to show the actual glue that I use before I put it in my bottle. Someone needs to keep reminding me to do that because I keep forgetting. But it's uh, the Scotch Tacky Glue 
that I put in there and it works wonderful. Okay, so after a lot of back and forth, I finally decided to use white as my background. I thought about using a pattern paper, but I went with solid smooth white basil marshmallow paper here. And I just coated the whole thing with clear gesso. And then I thought I would start with some blues here and kind of maybe create sort of a sky. So I pulled out two of my favorite summertime blue colors from Shimmers, and these are both sprays, Jenny B Blue Vibes and Frostbite Vibes. And I'm just doing this the easy way, just spraying it directly onto the paper, adding some water, and then just tilting the paper this way and that and letting it run and blend. I'm gonna drip in a little bit of white acrylic paint and again, add some water, let it run and blend. And I like to do that with white acrylic paint sometimes because it just lightens things up in certain areas and it just helps to create lights amongst all the darker blues. And uh, I just think it kind of creates a fun marble look. And yeah, I just like to experiment and try different things and I think it looks kind of cool. So I decided to try to bring in the packaging technique, but just wasn't working. It was kind of making a shape that I didn't really want. So I just decided to scrap the plastic idea and just continue to add water and turn the page and let it run and blend and do its own thing. And this is a great way to add color to a background if you, you know, don't want to use a brush. Because when you do use a brush, you get a brush stroke look and that's something that I didn't want on this. I wanted it to look kind of flowy and cloudy and just blended into this color and that color. I know that's a terrible description, but I didn't want it to look, you know, like brush strokes. And so this is a great way to avoid that. And um, yeah, I just wanted it to look kind of dreamy and beautiful like a sky. And this kind of is addicting to watch. When you're doing this in person, it's fun. I just kept doing it and I do wind up dabbing up a little bit of the water as I go because I did add quite a bit. And uh, yeah, let me point out that the gesso, I know I say this a lot, but I know there may be somebody watching it for the first time. The gesso is what allows all this color to run and blend together without soaking right through the page. And that's why I use the gesso. So at this point, I thought, I think I need some, uh, some sand down at the bottom. Let's make a little beach. So... I pulled out two other shimmers colors. These are not sprays. These are actual shimmers paints, uh, some of their original mix of shimmers. And the one I just added there is called Candlelight. And then this one here is a little darker and it's called Moon Rock. And these are perfect if you want a beach or some sand and they're extra, extra glittery. And the paint is a lot thicker than the sprays. So you definitely need to use a brush at least at first to apply it. And you can see here, I'm not doing this. This is definitely not professional. I mean, nothing I do is professional. I just make big messes. But this, I just literally brushed it on with a brush and then spritzed water and it kind of spread and blended. I mean, you, anybody, anybody can do this. I, you know, I, I get a lot of comments saying, I've tried to do mixed media and I can't, it never turns out, it's ugly. I'm telling you, you can do this. All you have to do is add some water and let it spread and you're gonna lose the brush stroke look. Like you can see there where I, I did brush strokes at the bottom, add some water and it will take away the brush stroke look. But anyway, there's the finished product of the background. You can see how shimmery that is at the bottom. Very, very shimmery. And that's the difference between the uh, the shimmers mix and then the sprays. The sp some of the sprays are definitely shimmery too, but uh, those original shimmers are almost glittery. So, so pretty. But yeah, anybody can make a background like this. It really is just about using gesso, using the right amount of water and letting it dry. Um, it just takes patience and practice. And yeah, I mean, you saw that really did not take any expertise at, at whatsoever. Um, yeah, it just was a big old mess that turned into a background, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, okay, so I thought I would add a little bit of cloud action to the background. So I go back to that white acrylic paint. I let this background dry. Definitely didn't do this while it was wet. And then I'm using my little, I use the, usually use this little sponge dabber here with Distress Oxides. But sometimes I use it for something like this. And I'm just dripping down the paint and then using that little sponge to kind of 
spread it around, I guess you could say, in kind of a little circular motion to make little puffy clouds. And it's not like a, you know, they're not super white. They don't stand out a lot, but you can kind of see them there. And I feel like it'll look really nicely, or look nice when I put everything back down on top of it. All right, so I decided to pop everything up off the background. So I'm gonna use my adhesive foam for that. And um, I think this is a really fun, easy, quick way to get dimension and depth on a layout. Just add a little bit of foam. And there's tons of foam you could use. I really like this. It's I get it from Walmart. It's in the craft aisle and you get 40 sheets for I think $5. It comes in all the rainbow colors. And then, okay, for my picture, I'm going to add some layers. Now, I've already used this little scrap sheet of paper, or scrap piece of paper from a previous layout. It's a pink ombre pattern paper. And I'm going to use uh, the stripes on the back also there, kind of peeking from behind the left side of the photo. I felt like I would use pink behind the photo since there's so much blue going on. And this would kind of help give it some separation from the blue background. <clears throat> okay, now these stickers are not from Horizon. I believe these are from Whimsical or Pick Me Up. I cannot remember, but they are from a previous collection and they are little mini foam thickers in rainbow color, of course. And I thought I would use them to create where we were, Exuma at the top and then Bahamas here. I do wind up changing the top one. But I just kind of used colors that I had left because um, I've used a lot of these on previous layouts. But I wanted to fill in some of those wood pieces. And I thought that would be a good spot to put where we were. And then I want to use one of these shaped paper clips. I haven't used one of the airplanes yet. And it's a navy blue. Thought that was cute. And then before I decide anything else, I'm going to go ahead and add in some thread for some extra texture and some little pops of color here. I'm going to add in some yellow, some hot pink, and I think I do add the lime green and the navy blue because I am going to wind up adding in a little bit more navy blue here in just a few minutes once I change my mind. I love that lime green color. So I decided to go into the Joann's project pad. It's this from Horizon. If you remember a few months ago, Paige announced that Joann's was going to start carrying her collection, Horizon, and they have this exclusive project pad here, and it's got patterned papers and stickers. There's a whole sheet of these metallic gold alphas. I wanted to tone down the shine a little bit, so I just smudged a little bit of white gesso on top of it and there's still shiny gold it's more of a matte gold um i just like to take off that really really bright shine sometimes so i'm going to use a couple of the floral stickers over to the left of the photo and glue everything down and then i changed my mind here this is where i took off exuma and i wrote or not, i didn't write i stuck down the word paradise in navy blue thickers and those are from when, oh, here I go again. I've got them mixed up. Some of those thickers are from Pick Me Up. Some of them are from Whimsical, but they're from previous collections. Because I wanted to use the word Exuma over on the left. I first wanted to put the word Paradise, but that word was too long for these big alpha stickers. So I put Paradise over on the signpost, and then I'm going to do Exuma here on the left. So it's going to be like a sideways vertical title there and I love how that looks and you can kind of see the different shine there since I added the gesso on top of it same thing here for this sticker it's also the shiny gold I just toned it down a little bit the destination sticker thought that was nice to put in that little wood post there and then I'm going to continue to play around with some of the floral cluster stickers here from the project pad I'm going to move that one that I just stuck down um, yeah, I wasn't sure if I wanted to put any flowers above the photo. I just wasn't feeling that. I think I wanted to keep all the flowers to the left and the right. So I'm going to move that one over here to the right. And then I'm going to fussy cut this little one flower out here. And that's also from the 6x8 Horizon paper pad. 
Also from Horizon, these epoxy stickers, I'm going to use this one down at the bottom that says vacation, and then one of the regular stickers up at the top that says see the world. And I wanted to pull in some more of that navy blue, since I've got navy blue in the word paradise and navy blue in the, the little airplane, I'm going to add in some navy blue thread down here. So I've got three different points of that darker blue color. Make sure all that is glued down, make sure all the stickers. And then the last thing I do, I decided to put my journaling up here in this open space since there was a bunch of space there and I didn't want to write it. Uh, so I typed it and printed it out and created little journaling strips. And I also stamped the date there. But anyway, there's the final layout. I love how this turned out. I think it turned out really, really cute. And I'm very happy with my background. It looks kind of like a nice faded, messy, artsy sky. And I hope this inspires you in some way. I hope it inspires you to make your own background and just get messy and not overthink it and just go for it. Um, make sure you check out Paige's cut files. Um, have you ever had a cut file that matched a photo as perfectly as this one did? I could not wait to scrap it because it just, it worked out so well. But uh, yeah, anyway, I hope you guys like this. Let me know if you have any questions about any of the products or the uh, shimmers or anything else that I used or did today that I might've forgotten to mention. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. I hope you have a great week.